So we've got the complete list of what's going and what's staying, the exact rules for the new crisis suit configurations, the points cost for the new crew, only four detachments compared with the five of the Necrons and the Abmech, stealth suits got much better, and there's plenty more juicy stuff from the hard-hitting Montcar and Retaliation cadre detachments. Let's take a talk through the big changes in Codex Tau Empire. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking Tau, and it's a big day for the Tau Empire given their codex has leaked to the internet, and there's plenty of interesting stuff inside, some of it good, some of it bad, some of it a side grade. I feel like it's certainly going to shake up the army, though I feel like some of the changes are going to be more popular than others. The news of this all comes from the leaked Tau Empire Codex that is coming out in the Crude Hunting Pack box set this weekend. It does seem that it's a bit more likely that Games Workshop Codexes leak when they come out in one of these big box sets. It seems that this one's a good few days early compared with whether it should have been shown off. Full PDFs of it circulating on Reddit, Discord and plenty of other places beyond that. At the time of recording I don't believe that we have the absolute full book. It's missing around about five pages, including a few of the data sheets that we do know which ones are in the codex and which ones are out as per the points page, so there could be a few more surprises lurking there. In general though, we know the vast majority of the changes, loads of things that are slight updates to the data sheets, and all the detachments in full, and a few interesting unit trends, so I thought I'd talk through some of the biggest highlights, aiming to follow up with a full codex review as soon as there's the full information. Loads to talk about with detachment rules, datasheet changes, and new units, so let's jump straight in. First up, for the detachments, it may be a slightly disappointing that they've confirmed that there's just four Tau detachments. That is kind of surprising to me, given that they're a pretty major faction within Warhammer 40k. One of the more popular armies out there, it's maybe just a little bit surprising given that armies like the Adeptus Mechanicus got five different detachments, adds the Necrons, and Tyranids got six. In particular, it does maybe feel a bit harsh to the Tau, given that one of them is very heavily crew-focused, and it sort of feels like it's trying to make them into a more of a standalone army. It looks like for the majority of people who play actual Tau with limited focus on crew, there's just the Kaoyon, Montcar, and Retaliation cadre. As per normal, with 40k detachments, none of them lock out any models, so you can technically play any army in any detachment, though the buffs are going to be quite limited to certain units. The only real restriction is that you can't take Farsight and Ethereals within the same army. That's now on the Farsight datasheet now, rather than the detachment rules, which kind of makes sense. And as per normal, it looks like it's the normal fare of 4 enhancements and 6 stratagems for each force. For the detachments, we've got the Kaoyon one that we know already, big damage buffs towards the end of the game, though a few things have been changed around for it, as we'll get on to. There's now the Montcar detachment as well, aggressive fast moving damage and hitting the enemy hard as soon as possible, as you'd expect. There's the Retaliation cadre, which it focuses on battle suits, pretty much every single rule supports battle suits only, so if you want a full suited army, then this'll help support that. In particular, it seems to have emphasis on crisis suits dropping in close to immolate the enemy. Finally, we've got the one that Games Workshop showed off in the Crude Hunting Pack. The buffs for this one are entirely focused on Crude units, though it doesn't stop you from taking actual Tau units in there. I feel like there'd be a lot of advantage to mixing in a few Tau units to handle enemy heavies, while the Crudes do the majority of the work against lighter infantry. To be fair to them, I feel like they all seem at least genuinely somewhat interesting. In all honesty, I feel like Kaoyon might be less interesting than the rest at a first glance, though maybe that's partly a bit of bias towards new stuff. I did kind of suspect that they might as well have had some sort of support for a more dedicated mechanised Tau, focusing on Devilfish, Hammerheads and Skyrays and Piranhas and things, or maybe a Stealth Tau force, maybe going for things like Pathfinder, Stealth Suits and Ghost Kills and things, but it seems to be not the way that they've chosen to go. As we knew, there were going to be some datasheets gained and then datasheets lost in the codex. Maybe the ones lost were the bigger question as to which ones would be gained. For the gained units, the Crisis Battle Suits have been split into three different units with locked war gear, some forged for fusion blasters, fire knife for plasma and missiles, and star scythe for burst cannons and flamers. It is now confirmed that you can double up on those weapons, so you could still have dual plasma rifle suits if you wanted. We'll get onto them in a second. Otherwise, for the new crew units, the Shapers replaced by the Trail War and Flesh Shapers, the Crew Arch Rampagers are a new melee unit and look fairly savage, and the Crew Lone Spear is a lone operative that can mark targets for other crew units. 
Perhaps the more interesting and maybe apprehensive question is which units would go. By Games Workshop's teasers, we knew that we were going to be losing five different units. I think that people had their suspicions based on the Necrons Codex and certain fine cast characters going away. It seems that the answer to that mystery has now been revealed. The fine cast character models are indeed gone. Ornvar, Ornshi and Longstrike are no longer options in the Codex, unfortunately. That'll suck for people who had them in their collection. Looks like Games Workshop isn't planning to release plastic models of those anytime soon. Otherwise, the Crisis Battlesuit Commander is gone. The one in the more standard XV-8 suit, which is kind of annoying seeing as he was a fairly usable choice, and might have been more so in the Codex, I think, given there's other ways to get mobility boosts besides the Cold Star now. Finally, it seems that the fifth unit were the Tactical Drones. They were sort of priced into complete irrelevance by Games Workshop in the Index, as just the way to field a bunch of gun drones individually. I wasn't too surprised to see them gone. And it does seem that if you're using a drone in Codex Tau Empire, it's now just going to be a war gear choice, not representing its own model. The other things that people were maybe feeling might be a bit more at risk, it looks like the tide wall data sheets do all remain. The Tau Empire sort of floating fortification thing that usually tends to be a really niche pick. Vespid Stingwings are still in the Codex. I would have been kind of surprised if they had been removed, to be honest, but they are fine cast, I guess, so people were apprehensive. And the Fireside Marksman Sniper team remains as well. Again, it looks like he is holding out as one of the last resin relics of the Codex. Never a great feeling when Games Workshop takes units out of the Codex. Though I do feel like, similar to these, any crisis suits that had certain weapon combos locked in might not be getting the best feelings either. For one of the detachments, here's the Retaliation Cadre. The core rule is Bonded Heroes, so a damage boost to battle suits that get up close and personal, plus one strength within 12 inches, plus one AP within 6 inches, and I've got a stratagem that allows them to drop just outside of 3 inches of the enemy to potentially get both of those buffs on a big nasty Alpha Strike with Crisis Suits, perhaps. For their supporting rules, here's a few of the others. I thought some of these enhancements looked quite fun. The Star Flare Ignition System allows your units to jump back into reserves. Essentially could have a Crisis Suit unit bounding on and off the table, gunning down the enemy, though admittedly they're not going to be firing quite as many scary guns as before. Another one that I did quite like the sound of was the internal grenade racks, or these are battle suit only. This one allows you to gain the grenades keyword, and also if you move over a unit with a normal move, you get to roll 6d6, and for each 4, get one mortal wound. Could be a fun 1 2 punch with throwing the actual grenade stratagem out of them. That means that you might get 6 mortal wounds on an unlucky target if you can get super close. Besides that, I feel like probably the best two stratagems were the one command point jump, shoot, jump, and the two CP precision drop. The others may be a little bit less meaningful. Sustained hits against hordes, a 6 plus feel no pain from the stim injector, which got lifted from Cao Yon, and a small mortal wound damage and battle shot one for a charging enemy. I feel is a bit underwhelming, really. One meaningful buff for the army are stealth suits, which are far better at guiding than they were. Previously, they were kind of outcompeted by Tetras for that role but now are going to look genuinely interesting. Previously, their buff for guiding other units was just two reroll wound rolls of one, but now if they guide another unit, then you get to reroll hit rolls and wound rolls of one, so effectively that's a plus 36% damage buff if you didn't have any rerolls before. It might depend a little bit on exactly what they want to support. Some things do have built-in rerolls either to hit or to wound for various other special rules, but in theory land at least they're really quite a good buffing unit, Plus they've got the advantage of setting up in the midfield and having some other interesting options like the homing beacon. I feel like their relevance has been massively increased by this book. It will be quite nice to have something that can at least threaten to guide things as well as Tetris. It was a bit weird seeing literally every single Tau army on the competitive scene have to include those to get their best damage. Nice to have an in-codex option that can rival them for efficiency. The points page from the Codex, as ever, doesn't really mean much for the actual printed points in 10th edition. As we know, Games Workshop's new system is to print the out-of-date points costs in the Codex. That's usually by the time they've released the book, the meta's moved on anyway, and they need to think about balancing different things. And they'll release the digital points later when the book comes out on its own. It could be a bit annoying if we do get lots of these early access book copies in the launch box sets, as we might have quite a lot of armies that basically have their codex out, but we don't actually get their official points for really quite a depressingly long wait after. It seems that this book was probably still written prior to the start of 10th edition, given the 
points in it really reflect the start of 10th edition points. You've got things like the horribly overcosted things like the strike team and the breacher team, which are far more expensive than they should be. And Riptide's back up at 245 points, despite being decreased all the way down to 165 since then, and they're still not an auto take at that. In general, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the points cost. It's probably going to be relevant for the enhancements and perhaps the new units as well. As per Codex Dark Indoors, they had printed costs for new units like the Inner Circle Companions at 105 points. And despite that being a pretty stupid cost for them to be at, because it was far too expensive for what they offered. Games Workshop did go on to confirm that in the digital download. The ones for the Crew units I think are interesting. Crutox Rampages are 130 points per 3, which I think is a bit on the pricey side for what they do. Mainly just due to their speed being a bit low, though their damage and defense for that cost I think is kind of fine. Otherwise the Flesh Shaper 65, War Shaper 60, the Trail Shaper 55, the Lone Spear a massive 110, which is a bit disappointing. And the Hounds are 40 points per 5, a little bit less cheap and expendable. I wouldn't really say that there's a lot of good news here. I feel like those characters just cost too much for what they really bring to a standard crew carnivore unit. Maybe the Trail Shaper being the most interesting out of them at 55 points for the nice redeploy and things. It is a bit disappointing to see the Lone Spear all the way out at 110 points though. His damage output's kind of pitiful for that and you can't really use him as an expendable screening unit for that kind of cost either. He's still maybe not unplayable, he does give the rest of the crew's army some nice re-rolls to hit and things and that Javelin loadout can actually be quite threatening but it's still not super exciting. Otherwise I was kind of intrigued to see the new Crisis Suit loadout it looks like whatever their final points wind up at, the Star Scythe will be the cheapest at 140, the Sunforge 160 and the Fire Knife 165. All of those are cheaper than current issue battle suits, though I'd certainly expect them to be. Current battle suits can take three weapon systems, double up on shield drones, and everyone can have a shield generator, where none of those are the case for the ones in the new codex, even if they do get some fancy special rules, and you can take lots of them in small squads. For another detachment, perhaps one of the most initially exciting I think is the Monk card attachment, which I think could genuinely add quite a lot of power to the Tau units. The core rule gives you lethal hits on battle rounds 1-3 to three, and you get assault weapons if you're guided. People have been debating as to whether or not that rule works rules as written, though I think that it's perfectly clear what they intend it to be. Lethal hits I think is a really good boost and will help out a whole ton of Tau weapons. I feel like this one might be a popular detachment. For a couple of bits from it, they've got a couple of interesting enhancements, including one called Strike Swiftly. This one can give two units within six inches the Scout Six Inches keyword. Definitely good for getting early game. Definitely could be handy for getting early game lines of sight if you need them and move forward aggressively. There's also a fun one called Coordinated Exploitation. A unit that's guided by this Observer unit gets sustained hits one. So you could double down on giving another unit really quite a lot of extra attacks, helping out one of the bigger guns in the army. Otherwise, for stratagems, we've got Combat Debarkation, which allows you to reroll wound rolls against the closest target for a unit that got out of a transport. Quite nice for Pathfinders or Striker Squad. Could be handy enough for Breaches as well if they want to shoot something that's not on an objective. Pulse Onslaught can allow you to slow enemy units with pulse weapons, though it does cost 2 CP, which is a bit disappointing. Cantify Defense Systems is minus 1 damage in the enemy shooting phase. Again, a bit pricey for what it really is at 2 CP. So I guess against damage 2 weapons it could be okay. Next up, for one of the best ones, we've got Pinpoint Counter Offensive. This one happens when you've got a non crew unit that's destroyed by an enemy, and then for the rest of the battle, all your non crew units can reroll all hits against that unit, which I think is really quite a massive boost. Might be a bit of an overlap with other things that can give you the same rule, but that one does seem pretty excellent for 1 CP. Otherwise, there's an Auto Advance 6 inches, pretty handy given that you can hand out the Assault keyword with Guiding. And a nice focus fire one where if two Tau units all combine fire against one target then you get extra AP. They can only use this battle rounds 1 to 3 and both units can only target that one unit so no firing at other smaller guns or other things. Overall seems pretty fun. I think the core rule is enough to carry the detachment in itself. Marking some scary enemy units for death with pinpoint counter offensive seems pretty good on the stratagem side of things. One major update for the Codex were the Tau Crisis battle suits. As we know, they've been split into three data sheets. Unfortunately, as I was sort of half suspecting, they are now confirmed to be three model units only. It's a far cry from in the past where you could have had, say, 10 strong Tau Crisis units led up by commanders and things. 
Even that was limited down to six at the start of 10th edition, now you can only take three of them, so really quite a lot less overwhelming there. The core stats for the battle suit haven't really changed all that much, they're pretty much the same as they were, and still count as vehicles and walkers, so you can fire them in combat with big guns never tire, as before they can deep strike, Otherwise though, there's a lot of changes that I think aren't going to go down well with the unit that used to be the core damage dealing heavy lifters of the army. Each suit can now only take two weapons, you can duplicate them, so you can take say two plasma rifles or two burst cannons and things, but you can only take them that the suit has access to. As mentioned, the fire knife is missiles and plasma, star scythe is only burst cannons and flamers, and some forge is fusion blasters, and it means that you can't take fusion blasters with flamers anymore, Cyclic Ion Blasters and Air Bursts are just completely gone. The drones got a bit nerfed as well, you can't duplicate drones per suit, so you could only say have one shield drone and say one gun drone. I guess most people will probably take that combo, maybe throw in one marker in case they need to guide, so most crisis suits will be running around with five wounds now. And perhaps one of the things that is a fresh disappointment is that you can't choose a shield generator versus support system for each suit now. These are all divvied up based on the type of suit. For some reason, they've decided that some forge are the ones that get shield generators where the others do not. They get weapon support and battle suit support systems respectively. Finally, just in case that wasn't enough kicking for the poor crisis suits, plasma rifles also dropped in range down from 24 inches to 18 inches. Still quite a nice general purpose profile, but you're only getting two shots with them at quite close range. Overall, between all that, per model, crisis suits are going to be a bit less dangerous for the most part, and really quite a lot less durable, with a lot of them not having invulnerable saves and dropping down to 5 wounds, and fielded in smaller squads that aren't anywhere near as efficient for character buffs. Focusing on each unit individually, the star scythe ones get the burst cannons and the flamers as mentioned, you can double up. Their special rule is to improve the AP by 1 if they're not attacking vehicles or monsters, so they do get a bit more efficient against infantry than they would be otherwise. They also get two fall back and shoot. As mentioned, looks like they're the cheapest at 140 points in the codex. The fire knife suits get the plasma rifle and missile pod, or doubling up on the two. Plasma rifles are 18 inches. They get to reroll hit rolls of one all the time, or all hit rerolls against starting strength units. So basically anything that hasn't taken any damage yet. They get to ignore modifiers to hit rolls, so between the re-rolls and the ignores modifiers, they're going to be hitting the enemy really quite reliably. Finally, there's the Thumb Forge, armed with two fusion blasters, no options there. They get the shield generators for the 4 plus invulnerable save. The fusion blasters are basically melter guns with melter 2, and they get two re-roll wound and damage rolls against monsters and vehicles. Genuinely, if you can get a bunch of them on their targets, it looks like they could be really quite threatening for the cost. They could have a pretty similar, fairly terrifying damage output to Space Marine Eradicators. Overall, I feel like they are definitely going to need to be a bit cheaper, given that you only need to get two guns. The damage dealing special rules do help out a bit, though. And given that there's three different data sheets, you can field an absolute ton of these if you really wanted to. You could field literally 27 battle suits in an army list, and you wouldn't max out your points. So if you want to go for some sort of all-crisis meme army, then you can. I feel like some of the idea behind this is interesting enough, though I feel like all of these more annoying changes and locked gear things to war gear are going to ruffle a lot of feathers. Next up, for the troop detachment, it is confirmed that the Hunter's Instincts and Skirmish Fighter special rules are both part of the actual hunting pack detachment. Neither of these are generic rules for recruit or anything like that. Hunter's Instincts is the one that gives you a plus one to hit if your unit is below starting strength, and plus one to wound if you're below half strength. A plus one to hit should be at least fairly reliable to hand out, though maybe a little bit less so against multi-wound, multi-model units. Otherwise, a few more details from the Codex are that Kroot Carnivores get the Battle Line upgrade, which I think does make sense, given that they'd be the foot troops of this army. They're up to Objective Control 2 now, so we'll be able to hold those points really quite reliably. From the Battle Report, we know that they've got a 2 Command Point Recycle a Unit stratagem, which looks like it's going to be best on Standard Carnivores, as you can still take them in a squad of 20. Pretty good to be able to return 100 points worth of High Objective Control chap onto the board, they absolutely do have the firepower and close combats to bully lighter enemy infantry off objectives. The Lone Spear's got an interesting one that you could give him a deny deep strike at 12 inches enhancement. That could make him a fairly godly backfield objective holder if you wanted. You can't shoot him outside of 12 inches and he can't deep strike within 12 inches. So you're going to have to move fast to get to grips with him. 
And I feel like for me, the best stratagem is the one where you can't shoot a unit greater than 12 inches away. You could have that on a fairly big and intimidating unit of Krutox Rampages. But they also have an EMP one to debuff enemy vehicles with their ballistic and weapon skill. Extra AP for focused fire against one combined target. I want to fall back, shoot and charge, which is generally handy to have. Maybe particularly nice on those Krutox Rampages as they could drop back and then do a charge to get those mortal wound impact hits all over again. Overall, I feel like it's a fairly well-designed detachment. I feel like the crew might be just a little bit limited in their ability to deal with enemy heavy hitters, but I feel like it could be a genuinely interesting army to run Kroot as the mainstay of your force to make use of all the synergies, and then just add in some efficient Tau to destroy some enemy heavies, maybe some Sunforge battlesuits potentially, perhaps Hammerheads or Skyrays. Talking of which, there are a bunch of other datasheet changes. Here's just a few maybe slightly more notable highlights. I'll cover them all in the proper codex review. One big change was to Oshovar himself. Commander Farsight gained a 2 plus armor save, which is rather nice. He also swapped his once per game melee rerolls for a free 0 CP battle tactic stratagem captain style. And I feel like that's kind of nice to give Tau the option to use those free stratagems. As compared with most other factions in the game, the stratagem manipulation they had wasn't that great. Otherwise, Cold Star and Enforcer Commanders can no longer double up on Cyclic Ion Blasters. I'm afraid it's just once per model for those. They can spam other things like Quad Fusion Blaster. At least on paper, that looks very intimidating alongside those Sunforge Crisis suits, as they could give the rerolls to wound and damage on the Fusion Blasters. Seems like fairly terrifying firepower with 10 of those coming at you with those big rerolls, particularly given the Commander ones are more accurate. The standard Fire Warrior Strike team changed their special rule to debuff infantry for a minus one to hit. Not sure if that's going to quite make them interesting enough to take over breaches in Devilfish, which seem to be the way for the on-foot troops at the moment. But I feel like that does genuinely give them a bit more utility for a squad maybe hanging around on a backfield objective with an ethereal generating some CP. Being able to ping some elite enemy units and just annoy them a bit and reduce their damage with minus one to hit seems like it's a good worth of their time as well as killing any light infantry they can see. They replaced an Overwatch 4 plus 1, which I think was generally an improvement compared with that, given that Tau usually have better options to Overwatch with than Pulse Rifles. Otherwise, it seems that some smart missile systems increased up to 4 shots from 3, and alongside those stealth suits, the Skyray missile defence gunship also gained a big twin linked on its missiles, which were already kind of strong last cannon profile before. That's really quite a major buff that directly helps it out with its best role of destroying tanks or aircraft. I feel like if its points remain very similar to what they were before, that will now be pretty much flatly the better choice compared with the Hammerhead. I feel like there's already a good argument to take them already. Finally, last but not least, we have the old staple of the Kaoyon Detachment, the index detachment they've had since the start of 10th edition. The core rule for this one stays the same. Sustained hits 1 from Battle Round 3+. It's boosted to sustained hits too if you're guided for essentially a plus 50% damage boost, so really meaningful scary tower firepower late in the game. Still could be interesting enough, and if you want to play KG, then you're probably going to get more damage out of this compared with some of the others. Though I would say that maybe the supporting abilities didn't get particularly better overall. The detachment got three major changes. First up, the Pure Tide Engram Neurochip was replaced by the Solid Image Projection Unit. The solid image allows you to redeploy three units before the game begins, but before you know first turn, maybe putting them in strategic reserves, but could be used to move squads around, and that could be kind of helpful, I guess. Otherwise, two stratagems were lost and went to the retaliation cadre, replaced by these ones. The best stratagem that was lost was strike and fade, in my opinion. That was the 2CP one to move, shoot, move with battle suits. But given their new form, it not, might not have been worth it on just a squad of three plus a commander. In their place, for one command point, there's attempting trap. Nominate a midfield objective on battle round three or later. And from then on, it's plus one to wound any enemy units that are within range of that objective. So a very meaningful and very easy damage boost on a point where opponents are probably still going to have to try and go and fight over. That one feels like it's basically auto-use as soon as it hits battle round 3. Feels like quite a nasty one to double down on the detachment's core ability and just hit the enemy really hard late game. Otherwise, the Wall of Mirrors one I think is another genuinely very good one. This one's one of those return to reserve stratagems and you can use it on stealth keyword units, ghost kill or shadow sum. 
and it's triggered at the end of the enemy turn, provided you're not in an engagement range. Could allow those units to make some fun late game plays, jumping around the board to harass enemy home field objective takers, or maybe be in a position to drop down and do positional secondary objectives, which could absolutely yield you more victory points. Seems pretty nice that if any of those are out of position, then you could do some movement shenanigans, and I guess perhaps increase the value of those units in this detachment, though I think all of them are very playable already. Overall, some interesting changes from Codex Tau. I feel like some of them are good, some of them are less so. Again, we won't really know the actual strength of the Codex until Games Workshop come out with the full digital points cost. Fingers crossed they do better to make Tau players happy than they did with the Dark Angels. I think for interesting things that have added strength to the army, the Stealth Suits and the Sky Ray buff are both quite good ones. Fairly good data sheets already getting better. I feel like compared with some of the other codexes, literally every single one of the detachments has its interest and does seem usable. I'm sure that we'll get some that dominate and some that get played less, but at least even if there's fewer detachments, they've actually seemed to have got them to be pretty good fun. I could genuinely see people tempted to play any of them. Maybe for less good stuff, the points cost on the new crews don't really look to be particularly tempting to me. I feel like they're probably out of the points range where they'd be considered particularly competitive, though I guess we'll wait and see on that front. And I must admit, the crisis suit changes do feel a bit on the weird side. They're just going to be spectacularly inflexible and per model just less dangerous and less hard to kill than they were before. Already coming on the backdrop of Tau feeling a little bit hoardy and cheap as a faction given the big points decreases at the start of 10th. Let me know your thoughts though, I'll certainly be interested to hear your initial takes. I'll hopefully follow this up with a few more unit reviews and maybe detachment reviews and a full review of the Codex when all rules are out. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see any of that. There'll be a fair bit more for the greater good. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, check out the link in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.